Welcome once again, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to the amazing realm of bizarre news. I'm your host, Dr. Franklin Rule, and let's start off with a trivia question. Let me extricate it here from its paper prison. The question, the hedgehog is the European cousin of which American critter? This is multiple choice, inverse alphabetical order. Is that the puma, the possum, the porcupine, or the pig? Now the prize, the only prize, is one pat on the back that you'll have to give to yourself. It's a heck of a lot better than a slap on the belly with a wet trout. Now speaking of hedgehogs, over in England they're having an unseasonably warm winter, and the poor little hedgehogs are running around the wild instead of hibernating, injuring their paws. But at the Tiggy Winkles Animal Hospital in Buckinghamshire, they're putting little booties on their feet to help them heal. Isn't that nice? Now back to the trivia question. Here are the four choices again. The hedgehog's American cousin is that the puma, the possum, the porcupine, or the pig. And is that your final answer, the porcupine? You're absolutely right. Too easy. For the record, porcupines are actually rodents, and the Porcupine River is up in the Yukon Territory of Canada. Now, over in Yunnan province in China, a crematorium is only burning the bodies partially, then dumping the remains on the roadside in plastic bags. However, people have noticed the terrible stench emanating from those bags, and the crematorium has been ordered to burn the bodies fully. They've been trying to save diesel fuel by only burning them partially. Now, an Australian professor argues that cremation is actually echo-unfriendly. Each cremated body adds about 110 pounds of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere, promoting global warming. He suggests instead that you be buried in a cardboard box placed under a tree. When your body begins to rot, you'll provide nutrients for the tree, which will then draw down CO2, combating global warming. Yes. Now here's Billy Ray Cyrus, well-known singer, country singer, and he's just revealed that when he was attempting to become a baseball player, an inner voice, a disparate voice, told him to sell his catcher's mitt and buy a guitar. He heeded that inner voice, and of course the rest is music history, known for such hits as Harper Valley, USA, and Achy Breaky Heart. Now speaking of hearts, I have some bad news to deliver. Peter Houghton, the longest living man with an artificial heart, has died at the age of 66 in Birmingham, England. He got the heart back in 2000, it was actually a Jarvik 2000 heart. However, even though he suffered massive organ failure at the time of his death, his heart was still beating. Indeed, it had to be disconnected so he could officially be declared dead. How about that? Now here's a potato down in Nicholson, Georgia. A husband and wife got into a spat, and she hurled a potato right at him, hit him in the nose, knocked him unconscious. She was arrested, but he's not going to prefer charges. My recommendation is, instead of tossing the potato, you perform the famous straw in the potato experiment. Take a straw, pinch it, and say the magic word, Gai, right through. Do you see that? Let's try that once again. Gai, do you see that? Let's try that one more time. Gai. Now, the principle at work here is as follows. We're all surrounded by air which acts downward with a pressure of 14.7 pounds per square inch. When I pinch the straw, I'm trapping air in it, converting it to something akin to a nail. Let's try again. Gai. If I were to perform this on the surface of the red planet Mars, where the atmosphere is much thinner, it would not work quite as well. Gai. Contrary-wise, if I were to perform it on the surface of Venus, where the atmosphere is 90 times that on Earth, gai, it would work even better. Let's try one more time. Gai. And one more. Gai. Gai. And one more. Gai. Do you see that? One potato, ten straws, beyond belief. Now, until next time, may the power of the cosmos be with you. Yes. Yes.